Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. You know, up until now, I've shown you my layout and most of my trains running along the tracks. But in this video, we're going to do something different. We're going to take a close look at the operational side of things. In other words, how it all works. And it all starts with the control panel. So we're going to use it to run some trains. Okay, so this is the control panel. I custom built this floating control panel above the layout so I can see everything that's going on as I operate the trains. I've also installed one master switch to provide all the power to the layout and to the control panel right here behind the skirt. So we're going to turn it on now. Now there's enough power to all the main tracks on the layout and to the control panel itself. As you can see, these LEDs are lit now, indicating the position of the turnout switches. So looking at the control panel, as you can see from this station here, I have a perfect view of the entire layout and all the, all the trains that are running along the tracks. The control panel is a scaled down version of all the tracks on the layout. This section here represents the bottom track sections, while this up in this corner is all the upper track. They're separated so I can see what's going on above and below the track sections. Right here we have all the switches that provide power to both turntables, the whisker tracks, and all the sidings. These are double pole, double throw switches. In the lower section here, we have more switches that provide lighting and sound effects to all the buildings. What I've done here now is I separated the bicolor LEDs to two sections. In this section here, they show the location of all the turnouts that are on the main lines. So in other words, right now they're all green. That indicates that the train can run right through the main section without turning onto a separate track. So if the train is coming across, he's just gonna run right through and remain on that track. In this section here, I've separated the bicolor LEDs to show us that the turnouts are in a close position from one track to the other. This section here, these green LEDs, indicate that it's safe for the train to continue on its path on the current track. And I can confirm that by showing here that all the turnouts are in the closed position. When the power is on, only the main tracks are provided power right now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth section of track right here have power. And the two upper sections, seven and eight, have power right now. Not the sidings and not the whisker tracks. So in order to operate the Santa Fe right now, we'd have to provide power to siding number four. So this is siding number four right here. We're gonna put power down. Now there's power to siding number four. These switches are connected right to the power source. So currently, that Santa Fe is sitting in siding number four. That would be one, two, three, four, sitting right here. So that switch shows it in the open position. So the, the train can travel from the siding to the main track. But we have to throw this turn out here. So here we go. You see, when I throw that switch, the LED light turns from green to red. It lets us know that that turnout is in the open position now, allowing this train to come through and onto the main track. After it crosses into the main track, when it clears the turnout, we throw it back and it turns it green. Same thing happens now here in this section. When I throw the switch, you can see this LED light turn green. So when I'm looking at it, I can clearly see now by cross-checking that I have a turnout that's, in, that's open and it's right here. This specific turnout is open. So I have to use caution when running the trains.
When throwing switches for the double crossovers, which are, I have four of them on the layout, they're located right here, one, two, three, and four. So let's say we have the train that's coming along this track and we're gonna switch them from track number two to track number three. We're gonna throw this switch and this switch. You can see the bicolor LEDs now turn from green to red. So I know now that this train will gonna come here and indicates going on to track number three. When the train has cleared, we can throw it back, closing those turnouts for mainline operation again. And in this section, when we throw those switches, you can see here that these two have turned to green. So when I'm looking at it, I know I have two turnouts that are in the open position and they're right here. This section makes it easy to look. I, I can see what's open and what's closed. So right now, for mainline operation, everything should be in the closed position. So the top row switches here are for all my sidings. Sidings one through siding eight, turning power onto them. So right now we're power siding number three and siding number six. And I can operate the trains that are located on those sidings. We turn the power back off to three, we turn the power back off to six. Now for trains along the whisker tracks, for both turntables, they're right here. These switches control those whisker tracks. For a train that's around turntable number one on whisker track number five would be right here. W5 would be whisker five. So now we've provided power to that whisker track and we can operate that train to enter the turntable. And to turn the power back off, we simply throw the switch. This switch here provides power to the first turntable to power the track that's on the turntable. Power on and power off. This series of switches here is for the second turntable. Power on to the track and for operation of the turntable and for the whisker tracks surrounding that turntable. Turntable number two. The lower section of switches provide power and sounds to the buildings in the town and to the crossing gates. We have power to the tower, the crossing gates, the buildings, the duck chute, and all the signs around the layout. And to rotate the turntables, right now we could rotate turntable number two. We could turn on the power to the track and rotate the turntable. And it's rotating now from a whisker track to the main line. Here is the switch to the tower. Turn the lights on to the building. I use this switch right here. I've also positioned the switches as indicators. In other words, when all the switches on the bottom row are in the down position, all the switches are off. By switching up, I know that that switch is in the on position and this switch is in the on position, just by looking at it. So now I know everything is off. The double pull, double throw switches here should be in the center in the off position. So when whisker number eight track is thrown, it's up, there's power to that track right here. We wanna turn the power off, we put it in the neutral in the off position, which is the center position. So by looking at it again, all the switches are centered, power is off, all these switches are down, the power is off, all these LED lights are red, indicating all the track turnouts are in the closed position, and everything's in the green on the main lines, which indicates that it's safe to operate a train on the main line. I hope you all enjoyed this video regarding the control panel. In the next video, we can run multiple trains using the layout on multiple tracks. As always, 
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.